close the bracket then I press enter. You can see that I have 310 barbecue chicken. That's based on counts. So if I click, if I drag from here, I drag down, it automatically increments and gives me the, so much, the addition of everything. But this is not dynamic enough. Let's make it more dynamic. So what I'll do is, I'll delete all this. I'll create a table with this. Try to make my work more dynamic. I said this old table, I press Ctrl T. I select my table as an header. I press OK. So I created a formatted table with this. I don't really like something too colorful, so I go for the plain color. I remove, I just, let me just remove the filter button. So I do it again. I say count if again. Count if the range. So this is the range. The range of pizza sold is the range I'm looking for. I select all. Press comma. The next step is what criteria, right? So I go to the criteria. Criteria here is barbecue chicken. I select barbecue chicken. I close the bracket and I press enter. You can see it automatically gave me the summation of everything. It counted everything without me having to drag it one by one. That's the advantage of formatted table. So I do the same process for the sum if also. So I press equals to. Let me check the chart. Is there any complaints? Okay, everyone is here. Okay. I come to the sum if. I say sum if I say the range, the range that is the range of pizza sold. I control shift select all. I press comma. The next step is the criteria, right? The criteria is barbecue chicken. I press comma. The last step here is what's some range. <laughs> Some range. I close bracket and I press enter. It's automatically. Please, can I press? Can I press mute? Can I press mute, please? Please, can you mute yourself? Benny, please, can you help me mute the person? Yes, yes, I'm working on it. Okay, thank you. OK, let's continue. So this is just basically, I was trying, I'm, actually what I'm trying to do is just to refresh your memories. Just, just go back in memory lane and tell you, these are basically how we do count if and how we do some ifs. So we've done that now. So let's go to tax one now. That's tax 1.0, which is over here. So now to do, I, I, I know you people know, there's a function called some ifs. So, you know, um, Excel created a function called some if, which it's basically you can sum based on criteria, which is what we did here. So we're looking for the sum, the, the sales amount based on the pizza type. So now you, you can see here now this first one was barbecue chicken. So this is the total sum of barbecue chicken, which is 600,000, 600, 620,000 error. You can see the other pizza type here, which are the sum of everything here. So let's take a scenario now where we have more than one criteria. Because this one here, we had only one criteria. That was barbecue and pizza sold. That was only the criteria. Well, so let's take another example. We'll have more than one criteria. So we use a function called some ifs. So some ifs was actually created to compensate for the inability of some if in Excel. So it just basically are saying function of a function of a function. It's more like a nested ifs in Excel. They are doing if of if. So this, what we are doing now, we're going to be doing sum of sum. So let's do it together. Now we say equals to press some ifs you put the s in this that is some ifs some ifs so the first stage is what the first logic is what some range so you come here at the total sum of all the range of sales amount i press ctrl shift down i select all i press comma the next step is what criteria range i come up criteria range is what sales officer Criteria range is sales officer. So I select all the range of sales officer. I press Ctrl Shift down. I press comma. The next step is what? Criteria. That's the criteria. That's the condition. The first condition is what? Adetosoye. Adetosoye. I select Adetosoye. That's criteria one. I press comma. So I'm done with everything now in criteria one. So now the next step is what? Criteria two. The criteria two is now the months. So I select criteria two range. So I said, oh, hello. 
I select the whole range for criteria two, that's this month. I press Ctrl Shift down. I press comma. The next is what? Criteria, right? And the criteria is what? February 2019. Then I close the and I close the I close the whole function and I press enter. You can see now this method actually saves us from the step of filtering through the table. You can just get the sum, the sum made based on what? Based on sales officer and the month. So we know the sum range of all the we know the all the month all the money sold by Adewala at um, Ade Toye for the month of February 2019. This is just the advantage of using some if function. That's some ifs. That's why doing if I didn't is what in the condition of if of an if inside sum of if. I hope you guys go to that part. Hello. Um there's, there's a bit loud, but you go with you, you just rush can you get a quick one if you want to return. Okay. Did everybody did everybody get that part? Hello? Hello? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, did yeah, everybody got that part? Um, so where you were? Hello? Okay. I can hear you, can I can hear, hear you. you. Yeah, I can hear you, I can hear you. Yes, I mean, so when you were doing it, I think when you were moving between the, the, the table. sheets, um, we were not able to oh. see what you were actually selecting on the other side. Okay, I don't know if it was only really because of my internet or I don't know if it was general. Let me read again. Oh, let me delete it. Are you ready? So I press yes, equals yes. to equals to some ifs. Look at look at the condition now. I want to get the sales made, and the condition that I was given here was what the sales officer added to you, and the month of February 2019. So I have two conditions. You have to get I want to make get the sum the sales made by the um, officer um, added to you, and the month of February 2019. So what are you doing? I use the function called some ifs. Some is actually was made to compensate the inability of some if in Excel. So I press equals to some ifs. I press my tab. The first stage is what? The first logic here is what? Some range. That's the range of which we are summing for, which is this. I press control shift down. I've selected all the sum range now. I press comma. I go up again. I go up again. I'm up again. So what the thing saying? I said criteria range. That's the criteria one. The criteria one is what? The sales officer. So I come here, I select the sales officer. That's the criteria range. This criteria range. I'm, I've select all the sales officer. That's the range. I press control shift. I come here. Sorry. I press control shift down. I press comma. I go up again. The criteria is what? Is this added to added to so ye? That's the first criteria. So I press another comma. The next step is what criteria range two. The criteria range two is the month. So this is the month over here. I press Control Shift down. I press comma again. The criteria is what the criteria the, for the, the criteria range for the criteria two is what is the month, right? That's February 2019. I've selected it and I close the brackets. So I've done this to now. I've gotten, the, I've gotten the two criteria here now. I've gotten two criteria now. So if I press enter, this what happens. That's giving me the total sales made by the sales officer I did to Tosoye for the month of February 2019. Do you all get that? No, oh, Evans, where you say that? What say? No, I was um, asking Evans. Maybe was able I mean, to where you have to get that? Yes. Yes, 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 perfect. Now. Okay, perfect. I, I, can, I can move on, right? Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. So let's go to a more complex question now. So that the idea, what I actually did was just to show you, just to refresh your brain about this count if, the sum ifs, and the sum ifs. So because of without that, you won't really appreciate the ability of some products in Excel. So now, I hope you. Do you guys still remember what we did in primary school, what they call board mass? So the sum product actually works with the concept of board mass. Like, we you know multiplication comes before addition, right? From board mass itself. So if I want to get the total sales for this over here now, can anybody tell me what I will do for here? If I want to get the total sales, I would like to calculate this. If I want to get the total sales for this table over here, this one on my light here. 
Does anybody know go about it? Hello? Okay. Hello, does anybody know go about this? Wow. Okay, let me, just, let me just do it. So if I want to get this total sales here, what I do first, I do multiplication, right? I say equals to price times quantity. Press enter, then I drag down. Sorry, it's not even meant to be there. I drag down. So let me just create a table. Let me just create a border here. Let me create a border. So if I want to get the total sales, I say I say price times quantity, right? So I've already multiplied this. So I'll now sum everything together. I say equals to sum of this. I sum everything, I close bracket, and I press enter. So you can see the total sales is what? 47,400. So now if I want that's for the normal board mass calculation, that's what you do in our mathematics. But let's use some pro. Let's show you the dynamic ability of some product and what it can do. So I come here. I say equals to some products. The first step is what? Array one, right? I select array one, control shift down. I press comma. The second step is what? Array two. I press control shift down. And I close the bracket and I press enter. You can see that both of them are the same. Both are, both are what? 4,000, 47,400, right? And let me, show, let me show another method of doing it. You can also say equals to some products, some products, the array of price times the array of quantity, close bracket, enter. So you can see, you can do, you can use any of this method to get the some products of whatever you're looking for. So basically, this is just basically how it works. This one is just the normal one, if I do your, you are writing it on pen and paper, this is what you do. But I do it on the system using some product, using Excel, just show you the dynamic ability of it. So let me now show you another way of doing another application of some product now for this. Look at this table here. This one, I'm highlighting here. This two, this one, and this one here. This is the table. These are the criteria here, right? Let's say I want to get now to get the total quantity, right? The sales quantity for the salesperson, which is John. John, the product which is Deto, the month which is March. If I use some ifs, will this work? Okay, let's try using some ifs. Let's see if it works first. I will try some product now. So I say, if I say equals to some ifs, I say the sum range. That's the total sum range from here. Press comma. Criteria one. That's criteria one range. That's the sales press right. I press control shift down. I press comma. The criteria is what? John, right? I select John. I press another comma. The next step is what? Criteria two, right? Criteria two range. That's the product. I click here. I click on the product data. I select all. I press comma again. Criteria two is what? Data, right? I select data here. I press another comma. The criteria three is the month, right? I select the month, control shift, right? Right? I press comma again. The criteria three is what match, right? If I select match here and I close my bracket, this won't work. So if I press enter, you see that it won't work because it actually, some products only can collect range value that is vertical, not horizontal. I can see that the months here are horizontal. So that's one of these um, disability. That's one of disadvantage. Basically, that's one of the disadvantage of using some ifs. So let me now show you how to use some product to solve this and show you how you can make your work dynamic. So I delete this function, this formula here. I say equals to some products. Some product. The first array now, array one, right? That's the sales person, right? I select John. I select all here. I say John is equals to what? John is equals to what? I'm mean, sorry, the salesperson is equals to what? John. I close my bracket. I multiply again. That's the and sign. I put another bracket. Product next, right? I say product here. I select the whole range of products. 
I press control shift down. I say it's equals to what? Deto, right? I select deto. I close. I set, I say I create the um, multiplication sign again. I'll explain this logic to you very soon. After when I'm done with the formula, I'll explain the logic so everyone can understand with me. I put another bracket. The next step is what? The month, right? I select the whole month equals to what? March. Bracket. I put the multiplication sign again. I open another bracket. And I select the whole range. That's the whole sum, the whole quantity, sales quantity now. I select the whole sales quantity. Control shift right, control shift down. I close the bracket. So to make this work, now to close the bracket again, double double sides. So I close here, and I also close here. Then I press enter. So you can see that the total sales, the total sales quantity by John product the total amount match is 351. Let's check if if we're correct. So let's say John now. For the product is um, data, right? So this join here, yeah, this product data for March is 107. Okay, let's say equals to this. Let's join again. Let's join, okay, this join, this another join. This data for March is another one here. So I say equals to this. I say the sum of these two. It's basically the same thing with this. So now let's validate. Let me explain how we got this formula, so you guys will, so you guys understand better. Let me just delete all this now. So let me say, if I select the answer here, if let me give a let me just give a trick. If you see a formula that you don't understand in Excel, and you, and you, you maybe someone gives you an Excel sheet and see a formula that you don't really understand that you got to go about it, you can you can always press equals to formula formula text. Formula text. The reference is what? This is the reference, right? This is what I'm referencing, right? I close the bracket. I press enter. You see the formula here. But this is not what we're going to. I want to audit this formula now, so to understand better, I select the formula here. I come to the formula bar here. I go to trace precedence. If I trace the precedence, I can this formula can you to show me where this formula we're going for? You can show, you can see the array. Show me all the arrows. Yeah. It's showing me all the arrow in which this formula was gotten from, basically. So that's the idea of this. So basically, it's tracing the precedent. So you can see that this formula was gotten from salesperson, products, and also months. But let me remove arrow now. Let me. This is what I want to show you, you, you guys now. So I come here. Let's evaluate this formula now. So let's evaluate. Coming. Mm, coming. So let's evaluate this formula now. So there's something in Excel. So now this is the formula, right? So I want to evaluate this formula now. This was the formula I showed you just now, Shay. So let's click on evaluate button here. You can see the evaluate button. Let me increase it a little bit. So you can see the evaluate button. The first range which I selected were what? John, Mark, Kenny, Taiwo, Toyin, Felix, John. Mark, Kenny, Kenny, Tyro, John. But what we we're looking for was John, right? You get so do you what we we're looking for was John, but this was this was the what criteria range which we selected. That was the salesperson criteria range. So if I evaluate the formula again, you see something now. You know that John was what it was John we we're looking for, right? From that range you got at false. You can see that the first John here showed what true, false, but this was only John. This wasn't John. So you're showing false, 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 false true false 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 you remember that when i what remember that it was only two john that actually sold the door right so as you can see we have two we have two truths here one true another another true so i try to evaluate this formula now so you can understand better now so i click on evaluate again it's also it, it further breaks it down again so if i press evaluate again you can see now for the data for the product now that's the sk is basically you can see the product now. We have data close up, data close up, close up, data close up. Different SKUs, right? Yeah. Another SKU. What we're looking for was what data. You can see that from data here, yeah. we're looking for data. That is all equals towards data. So any place you see data, it will always show true. So if I now come click on evaluate again, you can see now 
the first plot SK is there, there was what they thought it showed it showed what true, false, true, false, true, false. We, we can see we have more than two, we have more than two truths. Yeah, that's because we had four debtors, but four debtors, right? Correct, but only John saw two debtors. That's why it was only two debtors that were basically selected from here. You get so you can press evaluate again to further evaluate your formula and press evaluate to see further. So basically, Excel reads data in basically ones and zeros, right? So if you have two truths, a true is represented as one, the first represented as what's zero. So if you have a true times true gives you true, true times false gives you what? False, false times false gives you false. That's basically, the, that's the logic behind this. So that's just basically, I was doing more of logic um, inside some product. That's what I was trying to evaluate, I'll show you how it worked. So this just basically keep evaluating, just to understand the formula better. These are more of the evaluation, but I won't waste my time with this. I'll close this. So I hope you all understood this right now, Shay. So now we're done with this now. So let's make our work more dynamic now. Because this one now, if I imagine I want to change this journal to what? Mark. Well, I have to be deleting the I can't be deleting the what they call it, the John and changing to Mark. So let's just make our work more dynamic. So let's create a new sheet. I'll call this sheet data validation. I call it data validation sheet. So from the sorry, when tax yeah. So from tax 1.1, I want to get all the range of this. I use data validation. So I come to data validation one. I use the unique function because you know that John came out more than once, right? So I press unique, press unique, the array. I'm collecting the array of all the salesperson. I close the bracket. I press enter. So this is the array of everything here, right? So what I do now, I come to here. I want to create a data validation for this. I come to data here. I click on data validation. I click on list. The source is in data validation. And I press OK. Hello, uh, hello, hello, Benny. No, we lost you for a moment. Did yeah, you... yeah, some call. So my phone, my phone rang. I, I might see, but can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen now. Okay, you can see my. Sorry, my phone, my phone rang. Sorry, some call. Sorry. So I've created a data validation now for this now. I'm trying to make my work more dynamic because you don't need to be changing every time now. So let's come down to product now. The product that's the SKU. They call it SKU. So I come here also. I click my unique. I don't get the unique of everything because you know that data came in more than once. So I select all the unique of everything. This my bracket enter. So basically, we have two only two products, right? So I can do a data validation easily for this now. I just come here. I click here. I click on my data validation. I click on list. I go to the source. The source is what the data validation. That's the two SKUs here, data and close up, right? And I click down and I press OK. So now I can see that I have two. Pro. I'm trying to make the work more dynamic now. So let's do for months now. I come to data validation. I come to list. I come to source. I said the old the old months now. That's from March, from January to July, right? Say so from January to July. I press OK. So now. Our work is dynamic now. So if I change for Mark, see so you can notice that it's zero because what Mark didn't sell. Mark didn't sell the toy. Mark sold only what close up. You can see the two the two times Mark came out was basically for close up. So if I change this to close up, let's see what happens. It came out now. You can see it came out as 461, right? Let's change the more. Let's see. For February, you can see this dynamic enough. Now you can see that that actually made your work more dynamic. So let's go to the next step, the next question, which is um tax 1.2. So this one basically is also the same process. We do data, we do some products now for this also. You say equals to some products. Some product, the array, the first array is what? The first condition here is sales officer, right? So I say the sales officer for all of this. Equals to what? 
So this of sine equals to what? The same person multiply. The the next condition is what? The month, right? So I select the whole month. I put in a new bracket, I select the whole month. I say equals to what? January 2019. I close brackets. I press times. Open bracket again. And I select the old value. That's the old sales made. Close my bracket. I, so from here now, I close the bracket. Yeah, and also close it from here also. Then I press enter. I can see the value here. So I can also do the data validation for this. But I won't do it because I don't really want to waste time. So I'll go to the next step, which is this tax 1.3 now. This one is looking more, it used to be more dynamic now. You can see now, just say for instance now, let's say you are in a marketing department now and they gave you this kind of data now, this kind of table now. They say you should get what? You should get the salesperson, you should get the branch of the salesperson, and you should get the month. You want to know the total unit sold by that person. So yeah, they'll give you three criteria now. They'll give you what? The sales officer, which is here. They've given you the, what? The branch. And I've also given you the month. So they said, so on a normal situation, if you want to solve this, we would have used what they called filters, right? We would have filtered all through. But we want to make our work more dynamic. So we use the sum products for this. So you say, so let's do it together now. You say equals to some products. Some products. So the first step is what array, right? So you select all the arrays from control. You say control shift down equals to equals to what? A day jola. Equals to a day jola. I close my bracket. I press multiplication sign again. I open the bracket. So the next step is what? Branch, right? So the branch is uh, basically the states. This is mostly used by people in distribution department because I've got people that are into marketing distribution. They use this technique a lot. They use this technique a lot, a lot, a lot. So I say I select all the all the range for the branch now. I press Control Shift down. I say equals to, to equals to what? Abia, right? I close my bracket. I put my multiplication sign again. I put another bracket. I say what? The next step now is what? For the month, right? So I select all the month from January to July. Control shift, right? I say equals to what? June 2019. I close my bracket. So I say what again? Multiplied by all the values now. I say open bracket. All the values. I select all the values now. That's total sales, all the sales units now. I press Control shift, right? Control shift down. Then I close my bracket. So this thing will not work if I don't close the back bracket all through. So I say, I close here, and I also close this bracket, open this bracket here, and I press enter. You can see now it's 61 here, right? So we can also make this one also dynamic to the way we did the first one. So let's try and do it together. So let's say, let's come to data validation here. We'll create a new cell here. So I say, unique. I say unique. Unique. I select all. Close brackets. Enter. These are all the unique values, right? So let's do data validation for this now. Let's say, so come here. I select this. Okay, sorry, it was this I was doing, right? Sorry, it was this I was doing. I was meant to do this. Sorry, I'm very sorry. I'm in tax 1.3, so let me do it again. Let me do data validation again. I say, okay. I say it was to unique, sorry. What's the unique? On the tax 1.3, the sales officer says all the sales officer control shifts down, right? I close my bracket and I press enter. So these are all the sales officers, right? These are all the sales officer for tax 1.3. So I do a data validation for it now. So I'm going to do a list data validation. So I come here, I select here, right? I come to the data tab. I select the data here, which is data validation over here. I click here, that's allow. From allow, I change the allow to list. I select the list, I go to the data source, which is in data validation, which is here, from here, right? I press Control Shift down, I select all, and I select the down arrow, I press OK. So you can see it has created a list data validation for me here now. So I did that also for the state also. So I come here, I say, 
unique also for states. Let me go to the top control. So I say equals to unique. Basically, unique gives you the unique value. Just like you're saying, you're bringing out the values in pivot table. That's how unique works. It just gives you the unique value. Because some some of those some of those sell and um, market and um, um, sales um, managers, they are, their name came out more than once. So I don't want a situation when I do data validation for everything and it is bringing the name more than once. That's how I did unique for everything. <coughs> Sorry. So I say unique. I come to tax 1.3. I click on ABI here. Yeah? I press Control Shift down. I close my bracket and I press enter. So you can see I've got it for all the state now. That's from Abia to Zamfara, right? Abia to Zamfara. That's all the 36 states in Nigeria. So now I do my data validation now. So I come to tax 1.3 again. This is actually, I'm trying to make your work more dynamic. Because if I was, if I was going to do this beside, why I created a new um, sheet? Because if I was going to do all those data validation beside the sheet, um, this shit I was working working with is not practicable. Practicable because if someone deletes a value or something, it affects the whole calculations. That's why I did it in a, in a different sheet entirely. So when I'm done doing it in this different sheet entirely, I now hide the sheet. You get the idea? So that's basically the idea behind that. So I come here, I create on I set data validation, I change this to list, I go to the source, I come to data validation here, I select everything from Abia. To Zamfara, I press down here, and I press OK. So you can see now this is now a list also. I see this is also a list now. You can see it's making your work more dynamic now. So let's continue. I think it's going to become more interesting now. So let's come here now. Let's say for the month now, I want to do a data value, but in the month you don't really need unique. But let's just do it. Let's just we can do it from here. We don't need to go to unique because everything is ready here already. So let's say I select here. I say um, data, come to data validation. I come to any value. I change to list. I get the source from January to June, just to July, sorry. Press down. I press OK. So you can see now it's already a list. So now you can see how dynamic it is. Now, so if I change a value, it changes. That means every person, Adam didn't sell in. I'll be, let's change. Let me check a northern state first. If person sold here, you can check out the name Adam. It mostly looks like a, a northern name. So, if you change, you can see how dynamic it is now. If you change any of the values, your work become more dynamic. So just just imagine the use of it. I, I, I took a guy. I took someone not quite long ago on this calculation on this technique, and he told me that this was something that he really really appreciated because of imagine him working with different products i mean different i mean different sku's different zone different regions and like giving them in different region i said okay um um dial get the sales officer which is adamu right his branch should be kaduna and she gets the, the sales for january how will you do that you have to start going through a lot of data you have to start filtering different, filtering and filtering, adding. You have to start sorting, you have to start filtering. But with some products and making, creating data um, data validation using this, it makes your work more dynamic. So from just, from here, I can just scroll down. You can say, okay, I want to check how much this person sold Ayodele in Kanu. This Ayodele, right, for Kanu and the month of April 2019. You can see how much it sold. So basically, just basically makes your work more dynamic. That's just the idea behind this. It makes your work more dynamic. So let's go to the tax 1.4. So this one, I will do two methods of solving this now. So you tell me the method you prefer doing. So because this one, they've given us two conditions now. We have two branch. You have branch one and branch two. So this one is more like, it's going to be like a little bit more technical, a little bit. So I want to take it easy. We're going to do it step by step. So I'll do, the, I'll do it in a, I'll do it. I'll break the step one after the other. So I'll say, let's start with step one now. So I say, equals to some products, some product, right? I say, I reward that the sales officer, right? I said all the sales officer, control shifts down, right? I say equals to what? It must be equals to, it must be equals to Adejola. I close the bracket, I say times, I open another bracket, 
the next one is what branch branch one right that's the next condition that's the next criteria branch one right which is abia right so i set all the branch here all the branch range i say control shift down i say equals to what equals to abia right i close my bracket i say times i won't do for bias so i'll go to the month now i'll open another bracket for the month so the month range now is what all the month from what january to july i said it must be equals to what january what january 2019 i close the bracket so from here now i have to close bracket twice again to make it complete com to, co to close all bracket i press enter i see this one here is two right that's for um adejola abia 2000 and, and for january 2019 is two right so i'll do that's for the branch one now. Don't do for branch two. You saw what I'm going to do here now. So I say equals to some products. Some products. I set all the. I set all the some all the all the all the product. And I press control shift down. I say equals to. I did Jola. I close my bracket. I say times open another bracket so the next one is what the branch two so i said the branch two now so i say from abia here i select down i say equals to what branch two this time around will be what by elsa i close the bracket i say times open another bracket the month now is what the month range now is what january to july i say equals to what was because it was january 2019 i close the bracket so from here again i have to close so from here again i have to select all the range oh i made a mistake sorry 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 i made a mistake sorry i think i didn't say i didn't say, okay i didn't select all the range of this i didn't select all the range of this sorry sorry i just know something was wrong sorry so i put another bracket sorry sorry about that i select all the range sorry about that Let's see let's see yes okay sorry about that. i was meant to select all the range of this i was going to set all the range of this i think that's that just keep my mind i was going to set all the range oh that's all the values all the values all this all the number all the amount sold of all the all the months i was going to select that let me do it again so i to be like let me just do it again so everybody understand what i did i press equals to some products I come here, I select all the range of this, I come up. On product, I set all the range. All the range, I say equals to what? Equals to Adejola, right? I close my bracket, I say times, I put another bracket. The branch one now, the branch one, I set all the range of branch one, control shift down. I say equals to what? Equals to Abia, right? I close the bracket. I say times. That's the modification sign again. Times, open brackets. The, all the months now. So I say all the months from what? January 2019 to July 2019. And it must be equals to what? It must be equals to what? January 2019. I close bracket. I say times. Open another bracket. All the range now. The range value. This is what I I didn't do. I skipped this one. I skipped this. I made a mistake the other time. So I press. I close the bracket again. I close the bracket again. I press enter. So you can see now it's 61 here, right? So I just did for only branch one. So I'll do for branch two now. So I say equals to. I select all the range of sales officer control shift down equals to equals to are they jolly right i close the bracket i press times open another bracket so now the first one i did was what branch one so i'm going to do for branch two this time around so i say 
I set all the range of the branch for all the states. I say control shift down, right? I say equals to what? Should be equals to what? So I'm going to do equals to what Bielsa. Because the first one I did was ABI, right? So I say equals to Bielsa. I close the bracket. I say times. I open another bracket. And I set all the range of the months now from January to July. Control shift right equals to what? January, January 2019. I close the bracket and I select all the range values now. Oh, I'm just making mistakes in this. Okay. Close the bracket. Times. Times. I set all the range values in this. Set all the range values in this. So I close the total brackets year and year. I press enter. So you can see it's giving me zero. Why is it giving me zero? Let's compare now. Let's say now. Let's say. So this is looking a little bit more. Wait, let me check. Let me check the formula first. Let me make sure if I'm correct and everything. Range value. That's yeah, okay. So now this is not really more, it's not really dynamic. So let's try and make it more dynamic. Because this one now, if you want to do this now, you have to now say because the sum of these two. I'll close back here. You now say it is 61, right? But it's not really dynamic. So let's make it more dynamic and more user friendly. Let's say. So what I'm doing now, try and join both branch one and branch two together in a single formula. So let's do it together. Let's see how it goes. So let's say equals to some product this one's going to be a little bit longer so just please try and bear with me because it's going to be a little bit more technical but i'll explain each step oh now i did this for everyone i press i press select some product right so i say sales officer i come here i set all the range of the sales officer now press control shift down control shift down equals to equals to Um, I did Jola, right? I close my bracket. I close my bracket. I say times another bracket again, right? This one now say for the branch range. Now say branch one now is Abia, right? So I say from Abia down should be equals to. It should be equals to abia right i close bracket now in this now we have two conditions in branch now so now i'll use the plus sign because i'll say branch one and branch two so i'll use the plus sign so i say plus but in excel plus is actually um all if i was doing it in power bi i would have used the asterisk sign like something like this I'm doing it in um, Excel. I'm, I would have used something like if I was doing it in, sorry, if I was doing it in Power BI, I would have used this, this sign. But since I'm doing it in Excel, I'll use the plus sign. So let me just go back to the plus sign here. So I'll say plus, I'll put another bracket. I select all the range again for, uh, what do you call it, for, for the branch. I set all. I say equals to this time around should not be to be Bielsa and it's equals to Bielsa. I close my bracket. I put multiplication. So now here yeah, I'll come here again and close the bracket again because of the I need a single entity. I close the bracket. I open back. I close the bracket again. So I come here now. I open another bracket. So the next step is what month, right? So I select the month here. I press Ctrl Shift, right? Equals to what? All the months here is what? January. So the month I'm looking for now is what? January, right? This is it. I close the bracket. I set times. I open another bracket again. And I select all the range. All the range value. I close my bracket. I close my bracket. And also close it over here again. So let's press, let's see if it works. 61. This is actually the same thing with this, but this one and the one I did, they actually broke it down one after the other. I did the first step, I did for the branch, branch one, and then what I did for branch one, and I did for branch two. The branch two actually was zero, 
So let's try and let's try and make it dynamic. Let's see. Let's try and make it dynamic. Let's see how it is. If we make it dynamic, let's come to data validation first. Let's see. Let's see. Unique. I come to unique. That's tax one point. I select all the sales officer here, right? I close the bracket. Press enter. I've gotten all the unique for all the sales officer here, right? So I do a data validation for this. I I go. I press control up. That's why that's why I go up faster. I press control up. I come here. I select here. I do a data validation for this. I come to data. I come to data validation here. Where is the data validation sign here? I from allow. I go to list. I select the list from the source. I go to data validation here. I select the old source from here. From from Ade Ade Jolla. I control shift down. I press the down arrow and I press OK. I come to here. So you can see it has created a list now. So I click here now also for branch one now. I do I also do data validation. Since I've done for data validation for state, the state has it test that six states, right? So I don't need to do um create another unique. I also do the previous one I've used. I come to data validation. I go to list. I click on the source. I go to data validation here yeah, for the months now. For the month. Click here, press OK. See, oh, actually, I was done for the two places. Okay, let's go. Let me do it again. So, allow, I go to list again to source. The source is, so is from data validation. Select here, select everything here, press OK. So, I've gotten to data validation, so I also do data validation from here directly. I don't need to go anywhere because the most I did this, I'll say list to the source January to July. Then I press OK. Then I press OK. Now you can see your work is dynamic. So let's try and change it. Now let's see how it works now. You can see everything changes. You can see the total value here is what? 86. This one too is 86. This was the one I also did later. This one is also 86 here, right? So let's change again. Let's see. I actually try I try making the work more dynamic. Let's see for let me change the months. So I think that was all that was all for today. So any question, any question, anyone? If I hello if I hello? If I I'm here, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Any question? Yeah, there's a question. Okay. So, so what I want to know, uh, what exactly is some product? Okay, some product is basically the combination of both sum, that's addition and product together, that's multiplication. So you are basically combining both addition and multiplication. So that's why, that's why in the beginning I asked that, do you people still remember your primary school calculation where they called they called it board mass, board mass. This is what that's why that's why I did this one first. That's why I did a bonus. So that's why I did as the tax one. That's why I did this first. I said what? You are doing a um, board mass. Call, call it board mass, right? Board, sorry. Board mass. So basically, it's what? If you look at this now, multiplication before addition. That's some product. So basically, you are doing multiplication before addition itself. That was basically the concept behind some products. So is there any other question? No, there's not a question. But um, I'm changing the flow now. Is there are there any questions? Hello. The room is the room is quiet. No, 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 no. Okay, no question. Everybody got it, right? Question. Yes. Okay. So everyone, I'm saying everyone knew it before then, before now. Well, no, no. Maybe just explain it for where are I guess. Okay. Maybe because from where I. No, no question at all, right? Yeah, no question. That's the that the question. What is some problem? Okay, okay. So that's that's all. I think what's what about Michael? Um, yeah, I'm here. Okay, Michael, I'm done. So okay, I don't know. Okay, so um, if I need a wrap up. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, so if there are no other questions, um, okay. So the videos will be uploaded tomorrow, as usual.
along with the process file so you can follow along. Then also again, we also ask a few questions after every webinar. So we'd like to know um, like how you got into that analysis for oh. one. Mm. Yeah. Actually, actually, Michael, Michael asked that ask last week. This session, because yeah, you know, like, started the last one. So for yeah. the repeat one, uh, those who missed this answer will just go watch it. Yes, basically. <laughs> so I think we're done, right? Yeah. So we can yeah. end the session. And just to let them know about the coming Power BI one, we can okay. give them a link. I'm yeah. even still yeah. working on my slides. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So we have a power BI session. We have yeah, an appraisal session by by six o'clock. And it, yeah, you can also follow, subscribe to our YouTube channel because um. So we started these um short videos where we explain some short and simple stuff on Power BI now, on Excel mostly, and also on the blog. So instead of having a one-hour video, who upload 10 minutes or five minutes videos which uploads uh, which basically shows you something simple you can do on power bi and exo so you can also follow the blog for that mm. we can give them the links the youtube link the blog I've, link I've, I've sent the youtube link oh, okay great and also our websites if they need trainings on this you know they can reach us we can even show them on the screen, if you share it on the screen, so they get to see everything, the blog, what it looks like, the website, the videos, sessions, so whatever has been there. Maybe some we see things they need to check out. Okay, so uh, this is basically the blog. This, And this is going to be and this is the Just search for your visage. Yeah, so this is so this is the short playlist that we started another job where we What we do short video to explain simple um, some complex concepts on Power BI and Excel. You should also subscribe to it. Then for our trainings, as you know, we have three different Rob Excel financial model and um, Power BI training. We can also pop up. So um, that's all for now. Okay, so thank you all for joining and uh, see you for those interested right. in Power BI, see you 6 p.m. For those uh, who will not show up for the 6 p.m. one, you have other things to do. See you next week. Have a nice week, guys. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you very much. Have a nice Welcome. Bye. Oh.